y'all, man. Welcome back to another video. Man, it's Young Chris 2K, man. Before we start this video, please hit that subscribe button, all right? After you hit that subscribe button, hit that post notification button. After that, that's it, all right? So anyway, y'all, man, I'm reacting to Shirai Street Legend, T-Roy, HK Blood Brothers. Y'all, we, we should already know this, you know what I'm saying? But I haven't seen this video yet, so... And plus, when it's Shirai Street Legend, you know, I like, bro, his story, his story and telling, bro. I just love it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he gets all this facts. He gets all the information. All right. Y'all, y'all know what y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, yo, man, let's just let's get into this fucking video. Then start the video. Call one eight hundred, aka AK forty seven. Yeah. Call one eight hundred, aka AK forty seven. Yeah. Call one eight hundred, aka AK forty seven. Yeah. I pray to God I send a fish nigga to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Mayday, mayday, so. Yeah, bro. Can't play that type of music in the back. Every day before he blew up, BD, BD 64th and King of Heck. Back at y'all. Niggas love the heck. What up, family? Bro. It's your boy SCNTV. Back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is going to be about T Roy, aka T Roy from the O, and HK, aka Headshot Heck. T Roy is actually the older brother of Heck, and they come from that. Old Block Set, 64th and King Drive, BDs, these BDs, specific BDs, are kind of, um, they kind of responsible for that glow, and the reason why I say that is because these are the same BDs that was with Chief Keith every day before he blew up. These are the guys who Chief Keith talked about in his songs, and these are the guys that were out. So what song did Chief Key talk about this dude? Because bro, I'm not gonna lie, maybe he did. I mean, I did not know this, but the time, bro, Chief Keith was that guy. Chief Keith was that guy in 2014, 2013. Actually, I think that's when he blew up. 2013, dude was that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody could fuck with Chief Keith. Like he was the king of drill. Like bro, led the whole way. Like, and he did it. And the gangster, the gangster's way you could, you know what I'm saying? Bro dropped the bangers after banger, like bro, it, it was just, it was just crazy. That was a crazy time. That was a crazy era, bro. Era, that was a good era too. Like I ain't gonna lie, bro. I love that era. If I can go back to that, the cheap keep days, bro. Everybody was, bro. I'm not gonna lie, that don't like song. Was hitting every time, bro, in warm ups, bro, basketball warm ups, bro. Y'all just don't know. Out in the streets, putting in the work for they set. Now, before King Von got locked up, King Von and T Roy, they began to do hits together. So King Von ended up getting locked up. Everybody know this story, and King Von talks about it himself. So you know this is definitely not, definitely not considered to be snitching. Um. Like I said, before King Von got locked up, they would do his together. So when King Von got locked up, it was like somebody got to hold a torch. And that's exactly what T-Roy did. T-Roy was one of the biggest hitters. He's been mentioned in so many songs. He's been mentioned in at least about six songs that I know of. Um, one famous verse is when um, Rondo said, uh, T-Roy, that's bro God. Put me and T-Roy on the head and we going to go hard. He was King Von's right hand man we all know how certified king von is they actually had the o like the o was actually you know what i'm saying like that's why they called uh t roy the heart of the o because when von and roy was together they was like a, you know they was a real good team and they also dealt with a lot of niggas that was you know pretty tough in the streets too like d rose you know and I'm gonna be real with y'all. Lil Dirk said in this line in this song too that I'm, I hang out with killers that kill killers. Talking about Vaughn. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy that you got T Roy the same as him, his right hand man. Best friends. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy to think that there's somebody just like this man out there. That was just like that. You know what I'm saying? So them as a bro, as a tag team, bro, that is crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's like that's like Steph and, and KD together, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like you can't stop that, bro. That's that's destined to win. You know what I'm saying? Ain't only thing that's gonna stop it is 
you know, casualties in the streets, death and shit. Like, you die and something. Like, that's the only way you're going to stop their tag team, bro. If they like that, and you got to know Vaughn, bro. Vaughn is on you no matter what. Like you said, if it's up there, it's stuck there. Ain't nothing that nobody can do about it. You know what I'm saying? So, basically, somebody got to drop. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy. So, like I said, I can't believe if somebody was out there that that crazy. That's the same as Vaughn that was out there doing the same thing he was doing. And when they say he was the heart of the O, it's crazy, man. I mean, he out there doing, they out there drilling each other, they out there drilling people, you know what I'm saying, for fun. Like, like Dirk said, I hang out with killers that kill killers. Like, bro, yeah, you know how, bro, that's crazy, like, that's beyond PTSD at, at that point, bro. You killing killers? Yo, that's crazy. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, 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 Fuck Sardell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck Zico. Fuck both of the Sardells. Fuck <laughs> T-Roy, for a couple of years, was the main hitter of O-Block. He ended up catching Boss Trail. Why was this such a big hit for O-Block when T-Roy called Boss Trail? Well, the reason why this was such a big hit for O-Block is because Boss Trail knew how to shoot. And Boss Trail knew how to work with guns, you know, uh, pull them apart. You know, operate on them, clean them and things of that nature. You know, basically take care of a gun the way it's supposed to be taken care of. That's rare. That is, if you got somebody, because I know it's a lot of gangsters out there that do not, do not do that, bro. They do not take care of that gun, bro. You, Bro, that's the whole point of having a gun, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to have a gun, bro, you got to respect that gun. You got to love that gun, bro. You got to take that whole apart. You got to take it to the part where you can take the fire pan out and everything, bro. If you know how to do all that and you know how to shoot that hoe. And you know how to aim, you know how to shoot, shoot. Bro, you are dangerous. You, bro, you are a, like, I ain't gonna lie to you. You are, like, too much for your team. Like, bro, like, they gotta keep you safe, bro, at all costs. No matter what. You are, like, the number one shooter. For you to get knocked off, that is crazy. You know what I'm saying? For you to take care of your gun, know what to do with a gun. So, that means your guns will never jam. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, that's how people die, because they gun jam. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't take care of their gun. They think if you just keep shooting it all the time, it ain't going to jam, bro. Guns are meant to jam, too. You know what I'm saying? They're going to jam eventually. It's a gun. So if you take care of it all the right, bro, you straight, you're going to have a gun forever. You know what I'm saying? But for him to do that, that is rare, bro. Because a lot of guys don't do that, bro. I'm being for real. I know a lot of people that don't even take care of their gun like that. They just wake up in the morning and put it in their pocket or something. Um, or like, go shoot it somewhere. You know what I'm saying? But they don't really take care of it. They don't take it apart. They don't clean or none of that, bro. Guys like that, I can't really be around, bro. Because if we get into a situation, bro, you, you already know what's going to happen, bro. We're going to have to pull it out and then your shit jam. And that's like probably the worst thing to ever happen. You know what I'm saying? Unless you got, like, if you're in a duck situation where you had, you know, like, a drum on it and that shit just didn't work. That's two different things. You know what I'm saying? In order for it to, you know, operate properly. Um, he also was teaching guys how to go on hits and things of this nature. So, after Boss Trail got Sherrod, you know, T-Roy felt like he had to take Boss Trail out. Because they kind of made um, Boss Trail one of the top shooters. Mind you, he was already doing hits, but it was war and T-Roy was out there. Now, T-Roy was the type of guy that T-Roy was a lurker. What do I mean by a lurker? T-Roy would go after certain people. You know what I'm saying? He would do hits on, on certain people. T-Roy would try to get the most deadliest ones out of the way. As a matter of fact, that's how he ended up getting killed. He ended up getting killed going to Paxtown looking for TB. Just so happened, he was spotted before TB can get to him. You see what I'm saying? He was well respected in the street, and actually he was feared in the street. No, I didn't never meet T-Roy or nothing like that, and I didn't know him, but he struck me as the type of, you know, little dude that kind of had a Napoleonic complex or whatever they call it, you know, uh, the look man complex. I seen a tweet um, that he had sent to, I think it was Melly, and... Uh, Hey, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. This, if this is, if the dude in the orange is T-Roy, that dude is short as hell. So the shortest dude in the street got the biggest heart. Right, that's what you telling me right now? The shortest guy in the street got the biggest heart? Yo, that takes a lot of guts, bro. Because you got to think about short people, always, they always get disrespected. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't like, it ain't nothing new. So when you short, bro, you got to stand on some shit. You know what I mean? And I respect that, bro. But... For that man to go out to the, like, he doing certain hits, that's like a hitman, bro. Like, he ain't, he ain't doing, like, he don't, 
on S rank missions and shit. You know what I'm saying? Dude, it's not taking no C rank. Bro, it's taking straight S ranks, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's just taking nothing but that. I want that. I want to get the top top guy out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I think, I'm thinking, like, shorty, do your thing, G. I mean, that's what you doing, bro. You taking out the top guys. I mean, for you, I can see why he's the heart of old black, bro. Because he's doing what guys, I guess what guys wouldn't do, couldn't do. You know what I'm saying? Go take out the hardest killers. But that's tough, bro. I could, if, if him and Vaughn doing that, yeah, that's, yo, that is dangerous. Oh, um, he said something. He was woofing with Melly, and Melly told him, like, calm down, shorty. You know what I'm saying? That gun, you know, that gun bigger than you. And T. Roy said, shit, nigga, I don't give a fuck, or something like that. And it, it just, it, it was funny to me at the time because it's like, you know, you see pictures of T. Roy, and T. Roy was the shortest guy. But if you know, like I know, it always be with some of those short guys, man, some of y'all little niggas, bro. Some of y'all be some straight fools, Joe. My bro is really short. Five. It looked like he five five at the at you know right now. Like standing next to Vine, he looked like he's five five. Five six on a good day. You know what I'm saying? My mama. He was out. He was doing his thing or whatever. And so he goes to get TB. Okay. Boom. He ends up getting killed. Now, this is where this whole story gets crazy because after T. Roy got killed, which was in February 2017, Poppy got killed. Okay, so after Poppy gets killed, then Brick and Kobe gets killed and then TB gets killed. And after that, HK finally gets killed. Damn. All in 17? All in 17? Yo, that is tough. Damn. They ain't waiting. They ain't wasting no time, bro. All in one year, bro. That is... Oh, man, that's... 40, I can see if they got, I can see if Chicago gets 40 murders in, in a in a month. You know what I'm saying? 40, 40 murders, 40, look, I can't even say it right. 40 more, I can, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Yeah. Okay, so what happened was after T. Roy got killed, HK completely went berserk. He lost it. He started doing nothing but sliding. He started looking for anybody that had anything to do with his brother getting killed. And um like I said, after T. Roy got killed in February, Poppy got killed in June. HK's name comes up in that hit outside of that candy store. We know for a fact that HK is the one that killed Brick. He ended up, um, him and some other guys, they ended up catching Kobe and catching Brick right there on STL territory. Okay. Then we know for a fact, it's confirmed that he's actually the one that killed TB. So he just went crazy. He started sliding constantly. He was out there doing a lot of, you know, doing a lot of stuff that he probably would have never been doing if, you know, his brother would have never got killed. So, again, this is a perfect example. And it shows you the trauma behind, you know, all of these people getting killed in Chicago. Y'all got to think about it, too, though. I mean... Like, like I said before, bro, like, that's like the same thing if I lost my brothers, bro, it, at the, at this point, it doesn't even matter at this point, like, bro, like, you killed my brother, it's a rap, you gotta go, it's either you or me, like, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, bro, if y'all family member that you really love, all your family members that you really fuck with, your, even your, close, if your brother was close to you like that, and you lose him to gun violence, bro, and y'all from the same set, and you drop your brother get, you know, get killed, Bro, you'll lose it too, bro. I'm being real with you, bro. Because 
I don't care what nobody say, bro. If you lose somebody and somebody got something to do with it, bro, you gonna try to get his ass get his ass out the way, bro. You ain't gonna want no justice. You don't want to put him in the. You don't want him in the penitentiary, bro. You don't want him breathing. I don't give a fuck, you, bro. You can't breathe. I don't even want you living, bro. That's how I would feel. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing no one could do about it. Like I'm being dead, so there's nothing you can. I, bro, you can take me to therapy. You can take anybody to therapy. But if you just lost your brother, bro, you thinking all you thinking about is revenge, bro. And you, and like, and people that say like, well, you know, he's in a better place. God handling, bro. God at that, like, I love God, bro. I can't even say fuck God, bro. But like at that point, it's like fuck that, bro, because. God, God didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I have to go take somebody's life, bro. That, at that point, that's what is really happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you got to do. I mean, like, some people, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, they, they God going to take the will for it. You know what I'm saying? He's in a better place. You know? Like, if you think that positive stuff, that's cool. Not knocking on it. But some people, like, I just couldn't let that go, bro. You don't, don't speak that godly shit to me if I lost my brother. Like, none of that shit is not going to matter because... I'm still here. He gone. You know what I'm saying? And I'm always going to live with that the rest of your... You're going to have to live with that for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to hurt. So what you do with your... What you do when you hurt? You're going to try to go kill that guy. You're going to do whatever it takes to get revenge. You know what I mean? Like, for real. I mean, like I said in one of my other videos, there's no way that my brother going to get killed out here. And I'm just... And I'm, you know, and I'm supposed to be one of the guys and I'm just going to sit back and not do nothing. Exactly. Especially being young and thinking with that type of mentality. Oh, it's on now, motherfuckers. Like, for real. Like, I don't even care at this point if I die. As long as I take some of y'all with me. Then that's dangerous. Like, that's some real shit. I would think that same way, bro. Like, I lost my brothers, bro. It'd be like, I don't care if I'm doing 20 years of life. I don't care about none of that. I'm getting you out of here, bro. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, with that type of mindset, when you're young, bro, but it's hard. Like, I don't know. I ain't 23, bro. So, like, I don't really don't know. Like, I think this is the way it is. Like, a whole bunch of people think, like, bro, if you lose your brother, you're going to want revenge. Especially if it's gun violence, bro. Because you're going to be like, bro, okay. Because you hurting. You know, somebody just took your brother away from you. So, you got to do what you got to do. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of this, a lot of dudes going to have that mindset. This is, you know, when Vinzel died, um, TB started going crazy. When Taekwon died, K.I. started going crazy. When T-Roy died, H.K. started going crazy. You know what I'm saying? So on and so on and so forth. And the list goes on. But it's always it always starts. It always starts with somebody close to them losing their life. And then, boom, they start going crazy. After T-Roy died, like I said, H.K., he just started going crazy. He started lurking, you know what I'm saying, doing hits. He started robbing people. He pretty much got on some, you know, EBK shit. You know, fuck everybody. If you're not part of the O, you know what I'm saying, I'm robbing you. Um, um, I'm sticking your ass up. I'm shooting you. I'm smoking you. Whatever. And, you know, like I said, I can, I can kind of identify with that because I've had family that's been killed, you know, over nonsense. Okay, if we're going to have a war, if we're going to be warring, we need to be warned for something. But a lot of a lot of a lot of times people, you know, they be they be warned from inherited beef or either, you know, it's some dumb, you know, they started fighting in school or things of that nature. It's never about no money. It's never about nothing that's gonna get us get somebody somewhere. It's never about uh, nothing like, you know, this person, um, did something to my sister, raped my sister, or you know, something a, a, a just cause. I feel like most of it is never just cause and a lot of, you know, a lot of people die just because, you know, they want to have a name or, you know, they clout chasing, you know, they want to be the next martyr. So it, 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 in some strange way, it's like. I mean, I got to agree with dude on that. Cause, you know, people do kill over nine shit. You know what I'm saying? Some people kill over because you stole their J's and you stepped on their J's. You know what I'm saying? You get into a, a moment and it's going to happen, bro. If y'all watch the boondocks. Bro, it's the prime example of the moment. You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen, bro. Especially if it's two black people. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and they stand on it. They ain't finna let no... Like, bro, you ain't finna let nobody, you know, come up to you, talk to you any type of way. You know what I'm saying? Because you're you going to stand on that shit you talking about. And I'm pretty sure the dude that's talking to you crazy is going to stand on his word. You know what I'm saying? So you got two alpha males standing on shit. What's going to happen, bro? Either a fight going to break out or somebody shoot.
are both shooting. You know what I'm saying? So if you got two alpha males that's gonna stand, they stand on their shit, bro. Like, there's nothing you can do. It's like it's gonna happen, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how I think. That's just how like the black community. That's how we all just like. That's just how it is, bro. I don't know, bro. That's just really how it is, bro. Like that's it's just gonna lead to a fight or shoot. You know what I'm saying? Which one do you want? Because you're gonna get one of them. Regardless, you're going to have to pick A and B. Or it might be both. You never know. Gang banging is a form of suicide. It actually, what a gang is, a gang is supposed to be a brotherhood. And we all know that when gangs and organizations and things of that nature started off, it was for the community. It has went elsewhere, but it's still supposed to be a brotherhood. It's still supposed to be your, your safe haven. The gang is supposed to be where you can go and you can feel comfortable. You know that ain't nobody in this gang want to see you dead. You know, these the guys, they only, you know, they only supposed to want to see good things happen to you. Well, these days it's even got worse because you got members that, you know, go against each other. You got um, a lot of backdooring going on right now as we speak. So it's like <laughs> the gang ain't even the gang no more. So a lot of y'all that are risking y'all lives every day, man, and you know, putting y'all lives on the line. What is it? Just ask yourself this. What are you really risking your life for? Like, what is all of this for? But then you also got to think about this, bro. This is how I think about it, bro. Because life is real hard. You know what I'm saying? Life ain't easy, bro. So, like, the way other people see, like, I know, like, bro, I don't gang bang because ain't no, ain't no sense to me. I don't want to do that shit that's just not me but i'm not knocking for nobody else bro because a lot of people ain't got no choice because you know what i'm saying like for real like life is real hard you know what i'm saying and everybody life decision like bro, you don't know what this man going through you know what i'm saying maybe he can't get no job maybe he gotta maybe this is what he got this is what he know so what would he why would he change that you know what i'm saying i can't really agree with that you know what i mean because i can't bro because i don't I don't judge nobody, bro. I don't judge no gang banger, bro. I don't know what's going on in your life, but for you to join the gang, something pretty fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Some people join gangs because their brother got killed or, you know, everybody got their reasons, bro. And and a lot of people don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't give them a good reason, they're going to be like, oh, no, that's not right. You shouldn't do it. Like, bro, last time I checked, you know, America's a freedom. Uh, you know, okay? You can do whatever you want. You want to join the gang, you can join the gang. It's... Bro, I don't get a list of you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but nowadays, like, the gangs are different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand old heads be like, yeah, gangs was to protect the neighborhoods. Yeah, but then it's, bro, we in a different era. All right? I hate when people do this. Even when they do this in basketball, bro. They try to bring up Jordan. Like, bro, this is a different era, fam. We don't live in that time no more, okay? We live in 2021. All right? This is a different era, different kids, different generation, bro. You, bro. Oh, here's is different, bro. They, they, this is what they do. And I understand, but gangs are different now. Like, bro, bro, it's all about game bang. Like, it's, it's the, to me, it's the music, bro. It's all with the music. Is This is the music, man. And you have to blame the industry for that because they don't want to promote all the all types of music. They promote all gangster music. Really, gangster music is pushed more heavier than any other positive mu music that's out there. Like, dead ass. You can't blame the kids for listen to it if it's getting promoted everywhere. Radio station, YouTube, put it right in front of your face every time. You know what I'm saying? So, like, who can you really blame? Like, you got to blame them. You can't really blame the kid for joining the game. He got his own reason. You know what I'm saying? What is it for? What purpose is it for? Is it for something that's going to um, generate revenue? Is it for something that's going to progress you any way in life? Like, is it going to take you to another level in life in any type of way? If putting your, you know what I'm saying, putting your mask on and putting your gloves on and hopping in that whip, grabbing that 30 and going over there and killing this man going to help you in any type of way. Is it going to make you feel better? Is it going to make you feel like, you know, you've got your revenge? Is it gonna make your homie come back? Well, and then and then and this too right here. Think about it, bro. Gangsters in Chicago made it out. A lot of them made it out. So, 
you can't say that, bro. <laughs> you can't say that because it does it does get revenue because these guys go on these platforms and uh, they talent like rapping like that. That's a new wave right there, bro. People is on that. You know what I'm saying? People is on that. Even you a gangster you rapping, it, bro. It's gonna pay away. You know what I'm saying? Because bro, people want to hear that hard shit, bro. Like, bro, it, gangster like being a gangster, bro. It's a good. It's a good. It's a good side and a bad side to it, bro. Bad side, life or death from the streets. You know what I'm saying? But then the good side, if you make it out. You got that street cred. People gonna mess with you if you got street cred because you got these street cred. Street cred is so important when you coming into the rap game or whatever. You know, what I'm saying? people don't want to. You know, bro, you don't want to have no dirty old name, bro, because then your name be tarnished. You know, so you gotta keep that image up, bro. So yeah, bro, it's all about image nowadays. You know what I'm saying? That's that's, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's not. But your homie shouldn't even be dead. Do you know why? Because a lot of wars that are fought. Not just in Chicago, but in the streets, period. A lot of wars that are fought are senseless wars. What are we killing each other for? Don't tell me a block that we don't own. We not named after this block. We don't own. We named this block. We named this. We don't own that. That's not ours. So what are we really killing each other for? Like what it really is it? Can your children eat that reputation that you get for, for you know, for bodying this man or bodying that man? No. I just be trying to make y'all look at shit from a different light. Because I know y'all young and the first thing y'all be want to do is, I'm going to shoot that nigga. I'm going to shoot that nigga, Joe. Hey, hey, that's the first thing y'all be want to do, but y'all don't never think about the consequences. And it's consequences either way it goes. Whether you go to prison, whether uh, the next nigga catch you, slide on you and catch you behind that shit, it's always consequences. Don't think that you got away because you might get away right now, but in the long run, you gonna have to pay for what you did, straight like that. You gonna get back what you give. Believe that. Yeah, I'm in it right there. Yeah, I believe in karma. That shit real. I feel like if you put out negative energy, it's gonna come back. You know what I'm saying? That's why you always gotta think positive, put out that positive vibe. Sometimes you're gonna have to put that negative vibe in there. I don't care what nobody say. This is like, yeah, 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 it's bad and good. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have some good days. You're gonna have some bad days. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna always be a sunset at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, yo, man, if y'all like this reaction, man, y'all go ahead, you know what I'm saying? Like it. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and share this to, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to HK and T Roy. You know what I'm saying? Legends in, in Chicago. But anyway, y'all, man, it's Young Chris K, man. I'm out. Deuces.